I have used a lot of hiking gear over the years and I first started out with bringing lots of stuff that I just didn't need. So let's go over that now. Let's go. Hello long distance hikers and long term world travellers, Russ here bringing you the best tips and inspiration for hiking around the world. I've really dialled in my gear over the years so if you want to check out exactly what I'm using now then check out the links in the description below. Uh, by clicking them you'll be supporting my channel as well so thank you very much. But for this video we're going to be talking solely about all the gear that I ditched first. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video where I'll give you guys a top tip on how to lighten your load in your backpack. Okay so the first thing that I ditched first was my waterproof map cover, I mean yeah you could kind of constantly that being an important thing if it's going to be raining you can either just bring a waterproof map or what I do is I just use a Ziploc bag it's much simpler much lighter much cheaper and if you need to replace one you can just switch it out and get a new one the second piece of hiking gear that I ditched first was my cheap synthetic sleeping bag. Yes, they're cheaper, but they're very bulky. They're not very warm. They don't last very long. They can break easily. The zippers break on these things all the time, especially on those mummy style sleeping bags. So I highly recommend that you spend a little bit more money on a much lighter synthetic bag or even switch to a down sleeping bag. I use the Catabatic Gear Palisade 30 degree down sleeping quilt. It's definitely the best down sleeping quilt that I've ever bought. It's a little bit more on the pricier side but I think it's worth every penny. There are warmer sleeping quilts out there but this one is just perfect for three season hiking. If you are a little bit strapped for cash there are cheaper options out there for down sleeping quilts. The only problem is they're going to be a little bit bulkier and a little bit heavier. The third piece of hiking equipment that I ditched first was my Juta Futura 38 litre backpack. It was a great backpack to start with at only 90 quid from Go Outdoors but I wanted something that was much lighter much faster so I switched it out for my 40 litre HMG 2400 Windrider. The problem with the Futura was that it was a bit heavier than my current backpack. It wasn't waterproof. You needed to use a rain cover. It had all of these compartments on it that you just didn't need and they actually cut down the amount of space and things that you could actually put in the backpack so it wasn't very versatile. But my current backpack is waterproof. It's much lighter. It's much more durable, much more versatile and I absolutely love it. It's got a roll down top and two absolutely massive hip belt pockets so it's really good for putting my phone in there. Just a really good all round hiking backpack. Okay, the fourth piece of hiking gear that I ditched first was my Berghaus boots. They were big, they were bulky, they gave me blisters, they dried very very slowly, they weren't very comfortable. Yes they gave me that ankle support which was good when I was just starting out as a hiker but uh, I very quickly realised that it was much better for me to switch out to trail runners or hiking shoes. Trail runners and hiking shoes they're definitely much lighter, they dry a lot faster. Currently I'm using the Ultra Lone Peak 4.0s, they're probably the best trail runners that I've ever bought. They've got a massive toe box on the front so it really minimises blisters. They're just a really good, really comfortable trail runner to wear. Okay the fifth piece of hiking equipment that I ditched first was my OEX Fox One one man tent. I mean for 60 quid this tent was absolutely Absolutely fantastic I got so much use out of it the only problem was it was pretty heavy for its size at one and a half kilos so when I saved up enough money I went on to Z-Pax's website and I purchased their Solplex tent it weighs a third of the weight of the Fox one it's made out of Dyneema so it's very strong it sets up with two tent poles very quick to set up definitely a much better option for me than the Fox one it's also a little bit bigger so you've got a bit more breathing room and you can put your pack inside whereas with the Fox one you had to <laughs> had to leave my boots and everything like my backpack outside the tent in the vestibule but yeah, the OEX Fox one was a fantastic little tent, especially at that price point, but it wouldn't do forever. The sixth item that I would bring with me while hiking that I really couldn't wait to ditch was my Amazon Kindle. I mean, if you like to read while you're hiking, then fine. But for me, and I think like exactly the same as a lot of other hikers out there, uh, they get to camp at the end of walking about 25 miles in a day, and they're just too tired to even think about reading anything. I think I bought the Amazon Kindle with me while I was trekking about three or four times, and I was just like, nah, never Never again, never used it, just dead weight. The seventh piece of hiking gear that I ditched first was my really thick pair of Crack Hoppers rain trousers. These things had pockets going all the way down, they, they were really heavy. If they got wet, they weren't completely waterproof, so they'd just soak up the water and swing around. Uh, what you need is a pair of hiking rain trousers that are going to actually let the water run completely off your legs and they won't soak anything up. Get something that's one ply that's just going to keep the wind and the rain off and that's all you need. You'll be able to scrunch them down, fold them up really small, really compact and they're really light as well. This advice of course is only for three season hiking. If you're going in the winter then definitely bring a really thick pair of trousers. I usually wear a base layer and then put my rain trousers on top of that. So. 
if you're hiking in the winter, a base layer and some really thick trousers is definitely gonna help keep you warm. So by all means, a lot of this advice is definitely all down to when you're hiking and where you're hiking. Okay, the eighth piece of hiking gear that I ditched first was two trekking poles. I used to use two trekking poles all the time, but what I really find very good is if I have one hand free for getting my phone out, checking my maps or something like that. So now I've just switched to one trekking pole. I don't always bring a trekking pole with me. It's mainly if I'm going into places of high elevation, like mountains. I mean, I just went to Scaffold Pike in the Lake District and uh, I went up Snowdon the other week as well, which is really good. And I always bring a trekking pole with me, mainly for just on the downhill stretches or if I was to roll my ankle or hurt myself in some way, then I could use that trekking pole for support. I really don't think it's necessary to have two trekking poles. It just forces you to use both of your hands when really it's good to have at least one free. I mean, I see people walking along roads using their trekking poles and I just think, why are you even doing that? Like you've got two trekking poles, it's completely flat and you're on tarmac. Like one would be too much for that kind of activity, but yeah, just bring one. It's gonna save you weight and save you a lot of hassle and keep one hand free. The next piece of hiking equipment that I ditched first was my 20 liter Cetus Summit dry bag. This thing is massive. I took this with me traveling for the first time uh, back in 2016 and it just enabled me to bring way too many clothes. You just don't need a dry bag like this, especially if you're using a Dyneema backpack like me where it's waterproof and you just don't need a pack liner or a lot of people use like a rubbish compactor bag which is really strong. So if your pack's waterproof, you won't need one of these. If it's not, uh, then I'd recommend using something to keep all of your stuff dry. But yeah, waterproof backpack will stop you needing that. The 10th piece of hiking equipment that I ditched first was definitely my cheap power bank. I literally used to get through so many of these power banks because I couldn't find the right one. I just wanted something that was cheap. They didn't work very well. Uh, so eventually I actually switched out to this Anchor PowerCore 13,400 milliamp hour power bank with Qualcomm Quick Charge. It's a bit of a mouthful to say, but it charges my phone, my iPad, my Sony RX100. It charges really fast with the Quick Charge USB 3.0 port. Uh, this was 40 quid, whereas the other ones that I was buying were about 15 to 20 quid. So I think I got through about three or four of those. So the amount of money I spent on the cheaper ones, I could have definitely bought maybe two of these. So I found the right one in the end, but yeah, I highly recommend this power bank for your next hike. The next piece of gear that I ditched first for hiking was definitely my big DSLR camera. It was a Canon 700D. This thing was a beast. It weighed so much. The battery life on it wasn't very good. So I eventually switched out to a Sony RX100 Mark V. Definitely the best compact camera I can actually find on the market. Uh, it's a little bit pricey, but I got it for half price for 600 quid in the John Lewis outlet in Swindon. The only problem with the Sony RX100 Mark V is that it doesn't have a microphone input. So you have to put these little fuzzy windshield on the top just to give it that little bit of extra better sound. So yeah, when I'm going on a long trek, I bring the Sony RX100, but uh, recently I've switched to what I'm filming this in now, which is the Canon M50. It's got a microphone input and a hot shoe on the top so you can stick a microphone on the top. It's really good for taking outside in the wind so you guys can hear me very clearly. But then I'm a YouTuber and I like to record these hikes and make all of these videos. So for me, it's quite important. Uh, for anyone who's not a YouTuber and they just wanna get out there and hike, then uh, I'd just recommend using your phone or using a small compact camera just like the Sony RX100 Mark V. Big DSLR cameras are only really worth it if you're doing night photography or something like that if you're an actual photographer. But for me, I prefer a mirrorless camera. It's got a lot more computing power in it and it has facial recognition and everything like that. I'm sure some mirrored cameras do have that kind of functionality, but the Canon M50 and the Sony RX100 Mark V fit me very, very well. Okay, as promised guys, the top tip how to lighten your load in your backpack when you're going hiking is just dial in your gear and practice even if you're just starting out, bring the things that you think you're gonna need and as soon as you're like, no, don't need this, just ditch it or switch it out for something lighter. These things take time and they take practice. Everybody's different, everybody hikes their own hike. I think for me, all of the items that I mentioned in this video definitely aren't suitable for me. Some of them might be suitable for you, but just practice, see what goes well and see what works for you. Okay guys, campfire question, what hiking gear did you ditch first and why? The trail hunter community would love to hear about it in the comments section below. Thanks for watching this video guys. If you liked it, then hit that thumbs up. Be sure to watch either of the videos to my side here. Uh, also, if you haven't done so already, do consider subscribing to this channel for more videos just like this one. And I'll see you guys in the next one.